Hello, it's Jim and Stacey Lambright. Hey, so today is Martin Luther King Day in honor of him. We're going to go through 10 facts. Interesting facts. Interesting facts that you probably didn't know about that we didn't know. And so some really great stuff. He's obviously a huge, uh, amazing civil rights leader. So let's check it out on Martin Luther King Day. It says you are screen sharing. Cool. That's what I wanted to do. Perfect. I wanted to do that. So let's 10 things you may not know about Martin Luther King Jr. Stacey, number one. King's birth name was... King's birth name was Michael, not Martin. So King was born Michael King Jr. on January 15th, 1929. In 1934, however, his father, a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, traveled to Germany and became inspired by the Protestant re re Reformation. That's easy for you to say. Martin Luther. As a result, King Sr. changed his own name as well as his five-year-old son. Very amazing. So he entered college at the age of 15. I mean, I knew the guy was smart, but wow, he skipped grades 9 through 12, and he went to Morehouse College. Very cool on that. Uh, he was a grandson, great-grandson of Baptist ministers, so very cool, man. College at 15. <laughs> King received his doc. Oh, number three. King received his doctorate in systematic theology. After earning a divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozer, Crozer I gave Theological <laughs> Seminary, King attended graduate school at Boston University, where he received his PhD degree in 1955. The title of his dissertation was A Comparison of the Conceptions of God in the Thinking of Paul Tilch and Henry Nelson Wyman. And that's why everybody calls him Dr. King then, right? Yeah. Because uh, PhD they had. So King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. I didn't know that. But six years before his uh, iconic oration uh, at the March on Washington, King was among the civil rights leaders who spoke in the shadow of the great emancipator, which we know is uh, is uh, President Lincoln, during the prayer pilgrimage for freedom on May 17, 1957, for a crowd estimated between 15 and 30,000. Delivered his first national speech on the topic of voting rights, his speech in which he urged America to give us the ballot, drew strong reviews and positioned him at the forefront of the civil rights leadership. Very cool. Number five. King was in prison nearly 30 times. 30. According to the King Center, the civil rights leader went to jail 29 times. He was arrested for acts of civil disobedience and trumped up charges, such as when he was jailed in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956 for driving 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. You'd have been in oh, wow. uh, jail 100 times with that. That's ridiculous that they did that. But uh, amazing, he kept persevering even after all that persecution. Uh, number six, King narrowly escaped an assassination attempt a decade before his death. I did not know this, right? We all know, of course, that he was murdered. Um, yeah, on September 20, 1958, King was in Harlem signing copies of his new book, Stride Toward Freedom, in Blumstein's department store when he was approached by Isola Ware Curry. It's a woman. The woman asked if he was Martin Luther King. She said, yes, she plunged a seven-inch letter opener into his chest uh, just to show you that he was a man of God. The tip of the blade came to rest alongside his aorta, and King underwent hours of delicate emergency surgery. They said if he had even sneezed, it would have punctured his aorta and killed him. How amazing was that? But here's the amazing part. From his hospital bed where he coalesced for weeks, King issued a statement affirming his nonviolent principles, saying he felt no ill will toward his mentally ill attacker. Can you believe that? I would have probably felt lots of yeah. ill towards that. So amazing, man. Go ahead, number seven. King's last public speech foretold his death. Wow. King had come to Memphis in April 1968 to support the strike of the city's black garbage workers. And in his speech on the night before his assassination, he told an audience at Mason Temple Church, like that's any a dog behind us. That's not our stomach. That's a dog making that noise back there. Look at him. All right, keep going. Sorry. Go ahead. Crazy. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as people, will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have already seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Wow. Amazing, right? The night before it. So number eight, members of King's family did not believe James Earl Ray acted alone, right? So Ray was a career criminal. He pled guilty to King's assassination, but later recanted. King's son, Dexter, met publicly with Ray in 97 and argued for the case to be reopened. King's widow, Coretta, believed the mafia and local, state, and federal government agencies were deeply involved in the murder. Nothing more dangerous to the government, right, than a somebody, a free thinker, and somebody that can bring the people together. She praised the result of a 1999 civil trial in which a Memphis jury decided the assassination was a result of a conspiracy and that Ray was set up to take the blame. 
A U.S. Department of Investigation released in 2000 reported no evidence of a conspiracy. Of course, the government would never have anything to do that's wrong. We know you're listening, FBI and, uh, and, <laughs> and Amazon. Of course, no. Believe everything the government tells you, right? Mm, something's fishy with that. So King's mother was also slain by a bullet. On June 30th, 1974, a 69-year-old Alberta Williams King played the organ at the Sunday service inside Ebenezer Baptist Church. Marcus Wayne Chenault Jr. rose from the front pew, drew two pistols, and began to fire shots. One of the bullets struck and killed King, who died steps from where her son had preached nonviolence. Wow. The deranged gunman said that Christians were his enemy, and although he had received divine instructions to kill King's father, <clears throat> who was in the congregation, he killed King's mother instead because she was closer. The shooting also left a church deacon dead. Chenault received a death penalty sentence that was later changed to life imprisonment in, due to, in part due to King's family's opposition to the capital punishment. Once again, they're granting mercy to right. uh, people that did that. So uh, number 10, and we'll wrap up with this. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Cesar Chavez are the only other Americans to have had their birthdays observed as a national holiday. And actually, in 1983, it was President Ronald Reagan. He signed a bill that created a federal holiday to honor King. And well done, well deserved, well earned, it should be. The holiday was first commemorated in 1986 and is celebrated on the third Monday in January, close to the civil rights leader's January 15th birthday. And uh, we are very appreciative uh, as real estate agents, of course, of everything he did for the civil rights movement. Got rid of things that were horrible in real estate, like uh, redlining, right? Uh, Blockbusting, steering, all those things, all because one man stood up and one good man stood up and stood against the entire machine. And even though people were persecuting him and trying to kill him, continue to speak his mind. Freedom of speech is a very huge thing. So celebrate today. Um, remember the man, then uh, the great things that he did. Enjoy your day off. And uh, thanks. We'll see you guys soon. You get a drink. Go ahead.